our final video in this set introducing uh, complex numbers is going to be on rectangular coordinates and points in the plane. So kind of like what we're going to be starting to look at the geometry of complex numbers. How do we represent them in different ways? And so the, the point of this is that any complex number, we, z is equal to x plus i, y, we can associate with the point in the plane x comma y. So we're going to think of this as the real axis and this as the comp as the I guess I guess I shouldn't say complex. I guess I should say the imaginary axis here. So um, and let's just uh, do a quick example of this. If we were to think of z is equal to seven plus three i, so I would want to go seven units, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, over and one, two, three units up here. And so this right here would be a graphical representation of the point seven plus three i. And then, well, let's think about the modulus. The modulus of z is the square root of seven squared plus three squared. And that's going to be 49 plus nine is uh, 58, so square root 58. And so what do we see going on here? There's a triangle and we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So let me just draw the appropriate triangle here. Oops, let me get the straight line tool. So this side of our triangle has length seven. And this side of our triangle has length three. And so Pythagorean theorem says that this is going to, the, the hypotenuse is going to have length square root 58. So, so using this kind of geometric representation, then we kind of conclude here that the modulus of z is the distance from the origin in this kind of drawing sense. So all of this, you know, is it, kind of wrapping back around. We, we, we see how this picture gives us a nice, nice geometrical interpretation of the conjugate, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, of, of the modulate. Modulus. I'll talk about the conjugate in just a moment. Um, it also kind of gives us an, an idea for what's going on with why we're you putting absolute value bars around numbers. So if, let me just make a little number line here. So, so what is the absolute value of minus four? So minus four would be this point one, two, three, four. So this is, the distance that minus four is from the origin, zero. So, you know, this is, this is a geometric interpretation absolute value. So then it's natural for us to, the modulus is kind of a two dimensional version of that. So it's, an, it's natural that we're using absolute value bars to denote the modulus of a complex number. Uh, let me do one final point here, which had to do with the fact that in the previous video, we, were, we, we looked at the number z was minus one half plus square root three over two i. And remember it had the following properties that the modulus of Z was equal to one and the complex conjugate was minus one half minus square root three over two I. And the final thing that we want to observe is that the, this had a special property. This is not true in general, but uh, it is true in this case because the modulus of Z is equal to one that the reciprocal and the module, sorry, the reciprocal and the conjugate were one and the same. 
So, so what's going on here? Well, let me draw a circle here. Okay, so suppose that this is the circle of radius one. So, so what's going on here is that, at, you know, the modulus of Z is equal to one. These are points on the unit circle. Minus one half plus uh, square root three over two I. So that's not, ah, maybe, maybe it's a little bit closer there. So that is going to be Z right there. And how do we find the conjugate of Z? You simply reflect over the X axis. This is the conjugate of Z. So we keep the, we keep the same, um, we keep the same real part and the imaginary part goes from, you know, plus root three over two I to minus root three over two I. So any complex number with modulus one, that's going to be falling on the unit circle has the property that its conjugate is also its reciprocal. And so that's pretty cool. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed these videos and we'll do more of the stuff in class.